Welcome to Rob Z Radio. Hey, everybody. What's up? What's up, Zebras? So today, we got to shout out real quick before we get rolling on this thing. Shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to the Clay Cup in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Add the Clay Cup on Facebook and Instagram. Coffee, tea, and creativity. What Sarah Vogel does at the Clay Cup is amazing. She brings people together. She brings... Uh, you can't have coffee without creativity. You can't have creativity without coffee. Maybe, maybe you're not the same way, but those two things are usually tied together. Get your brain going, get your brain fired up, and then the creativity comes flowing in. That's what the cra- that's what the clay cup is all about. Maybe it should be called the cray cup, because it gets cray in there. Trade Secrets, shout out to Trade Secrets, Stephanie Height and her husband Andy and Altoona. Secrets and Trade on Facebook. Now they have sugar scrubs, bath bars, all natural deodorants, lip balms, whip body butters, all naturally made, all created in house with no extra ingredients thrown into those bad boys. That's what Trade Secrets is all about in Altoona. And Juice, 517 Allegheny Street in Hollidaysburg. On Facebook and Instagram, The Juice Bar, J O O S. That is cold pressed juice and smoothies, smoothie bowls, bone broth. Hot soups, raw vegan baked goods, everything is fresh, everything made to order, and that's what that's all about. The sponsors on this podcast, I love them because they make all natural ingredients. They help support people. They help uh, you be healthy. They help you to grow, and I I love that. Also, shout out to my dude, Jake Over. Any music, anything that you hear on this podcast, anything coming to the audio as far as music goes is from Jake Over. He makes all the beats. Uh, He's a music producer from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Look him up on Facebook, Jake Over. It's the takeover with Jake Over. That's what I used to say. He used to be on radio with me, and uh, that's what I always wanted to call his show. I don't think we ever ended up calling it that, but Jake, shout out to you, dude. All right. Let's get this episode started. Let's get rocking and rolling so I can get inspired, so you can get inspired. Welcome to the program. This is Rob Z Radio. All right, so today, uh, thank you, first of all, for joining me. This episode is is something necessary for me to talk about today because I'm feeling a little... Uh, frustrated with my internal dialogue, and and I think a lot of us have issues with internal dialogue. I know it's something that I battle with. Internal dialogue can really ruin your entire day. It's a whole thought process that we don't even think about being a thought process. So uh, the book I'm going to talk about is Learned Optimism. I love this book. Uh, Martin E. Seligman, I think that's how you say his last name. And I read this book a couple of years ago, I would suggest going out and buying it. You can find it on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. Uh, it's under like 15, 20 bucks. But there's a, a piece in here about disputing your beliefs, really learned optimism. A lot of us are pessimists just by nature. We're, a lot of us are pessimists just for survival instincts going back uh, you know, many, many years ago. Uh, generations, really. It's kind of built into us to be pessimists because those are survival techniques. But we need to learn how to have optimism in our brains because optimism helps you move forward and helps you to, to beat all those limiting beliefs in the modern world. So when you're disputing your beliefs, there's this, there's this uh, piece in here. It's on page 262 if you have the book. But it says, what happens when you shout equally damning things to yourself? Or damning? Not damning. What, <laughs> what happens when you shout damning things to yourself in your own head, you believe those things, right? You don't dispute them. After all, if you say the thing about yourself, then you reason with that thing. It must be an undisputable truth. Why would you say it to yourself unless it was true? I don't know what your internal dialogue is like. My internal dialogue, can I can beat myself up a lot. I can kind of get mad and frustrated with myself. It just happened to me this morning. It happens so often. I have a four-year-old, my son Max, taking him to school is a time when it happens because either he's, you know, doesn't want to get up in the morning, is kind of crabby, doesn't want to go to school, doesn't want to get dressed, wants to watch cartoons all morning, this and that and the other. I get him out into the car and when we get into the car, he's like, Dad, I don't have any toys. And I'm like, why wouldn't you think about getting the toys before we got in the car? And then I think, Rob, he's four years old. You're 35 years old. You can probably logically deduce why he didn't say anything and why you should have actively thought about something. So I'm not as much getting mad at him as I'm getting mad at myself, but I do get mad. And I don't like the fact that I get mad. It seems it's useless. It doesn't really benefit me in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't benefit him in any way, shape, or form. So uh, looking at that just from, from my perspective... I'm angry going into the house, getting the stuff that he needs for school so that he's happy, so I'm happy, so I can drop him off. I'm always a little bit late. I always run behind. It's just like this 
it's like a mantra that I live and I don't want to live it anymore. So I'm telling myself this, that I don't want to live this thing. And I'm sure there's something in your life that you don't want to live that either. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you run into the same situation. I think this is parents in general. We, we run into these problems all the time. And I, I try to use this podcast and I try to use books that I read like Learned Helplessness to help me to get over these things and to remember like, hey, remember, dude, you can break this stuff. You just got to work on it on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a situational kind of basis. So they talk about this wall vaulting game in Learned Optimism. Like where adversity comes up and uh, so this person is in sales and they're making cold calls. So the adversity is about to start making cold calls. The belief in your head, the, the, the story you're telling yourself is I hate doing this. I shouldn't have to make these cold calls. The consequence is you feel angry and tense and have a hard time even picking up the phone to make the cold call, right? So now uh, let's look at another way of looking at this. The adversity steps in. My first call of the night hung up on me. That first cold call you made, the person hung up. How are you going to react to that? The belief in this situation, they said, oh, well, that's one no that, That's one no out of the way. Yeah, that's one no. Okay, come on, Rob, learn how to read. Oh, well, that's one no out of the way. It brings me closer to a yes. The consequence is you feel relaxed and you feel energetic. And uh, just in reading that sentence, I was like stumbling over, that's one no out of the way. And I started to get kind of irritated, like, Rob, you're recording a podcast right now. Learn how to read that better. It's a limiting belief. It's okay. We all screw up. We all make mistakes. The point is to keep moving forward. I, I like doing things in one take because I feel like sometimes when you do multiple takes, I mean, you might get better. But really, uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, and there's a lot of realism in doing that first take. There's a lot of authenticity in being able to do that first take and keep it and be cool with it. I think that's pretty powerful. So uh, just reading that sentence right there, it's powerful, the belief that you tell yourself in your mind. You tell yourself a story, and if your brain tells you a story, you believe that story to be true because your brain's telling it. But we have to remember that we are not our thoughts. I've learned this through meditation. I've used the Headspace meditation app uh, for three years, really. I, I, I used that. Now I'm kind of just meditating on my own. I feel like I've developed a good practice, and uh, I'm reading some other books on meditation and trying to tie some other things in. Uh, but I think that there's a a story we tell ourselves in our head. It's a voice that we know is there, although we don't exactly acknowledge it all the time, that voice is not who we are. That voice is just, it's, it's, it's subconscious, so it's built into the background. It's our experiences throughout life, kind of sitting there and using a, a running dialogue to kind of explain life to us. And when we build into that voice, when we dive into that voice, we often don't question that voice. We think, man, that's who we are. We're not, we're not this happy person. We're this mad person. We're not this conquering person or this defeated person we're not somebody who wins every day we're somebody who loses every day and we are not our thoughts our thoughts we can choose we can pick and choose and we can change ones out for other ones just swapping one for the other think about like nascar when they're flying i'm not a huge nascar fan this is just the analogy that popped in my head think about you're flying around the track in nascar if you're a nascar fan that's awesome but you pull into the pit stop and those tires that they have are not popped, they're not blown, they're not ruined, they're not terrible tires, right? I mean, they're just getting worse and worse and worse, they're going to blow eventually, so they pop those ones off in exchange for brand new tires that are going to have better tread, are going to stick better to the track, are going to help you win that race and help you pass that next driver, and think about that in your brain, like, you may have this thought, this thought may be there, it might not be the greatest thought, it might be a thought that you've used forever, that you've worn down, that you've beaten down into the ground, why don't you Take that thought. You've had it. You have it. It's okay that you have it. Put a pause in. Put that pause in. Step into the pit stop. Replace that thought with a better thought. That thought was not helpful. That thought is a thought that I used in the past for whatever reason. Just kind of built into my brain. I want to I wanna get rid of that thought. I want to replace it with another thought. I'm going to slap it right in next to it. Right? Pop out one, pop in another. That This new thought is positive. It's uplifting. It's helping me grow. That's what I'm doing right now. So my new thought would be, man, Rob, step into this podcast studio, turn the microphone on, put some positivity into other people's lives while you sit here and remind yourself of why things aren't bad, why things are good, why things are moving forward. Put those positive thoughts in your head because those positive thoughts 
are going to grow. And they're and the more you talk about them, the better they're going to get. So on top of this, I would also promote putting yourself on video, putting yourself on microphone, talking about the things that you're learning in your mind. Because if you learn them in your mind, but you don't apply them or you don't repeat them, they don't stick. Or they could take a lot longer to stick. But the more that you practice them and actually practice changing one thing over to the other, it's going to get a lot better. It's going to get a lot easier. And going back to my son, Max, and getting him into the car every single morning, uh, I, I caught myself. I got angry. I did. I got out. And I got Max's toys, came back into the car, and I got in the car, and um, I apologized to him. And I said, buddy, I'm sorry for being angry today. I'm sorry that I was mean. Because I don't want him to grow up with that anger like that I have inside of me and I, it scares me to think that I might pass that along to another generation. So I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect, but I'm going to keep getting better. And I think even if you can just accept the fact that you were mad, change that. And then apologize to yourself. Apologize to the person you were mad at. Because there was no reason to be mad at Max. He's four years old. He's he's not mad Max. He's happy Max. I should be happy Rob and be a happy dad to him. So the last part of this I'll leave you with is they say, now identify your own daily wall at work. So your wall is like the adversity, belief, consequence pattern we went down through earlier in learned optimism. Now, next time, go right up to that wall every single day, uh, except whenever you go up to the wall, listen to what you are saying to yourself when you read something like, my first call tonight hung up on me. Uh, what is the first thing you think? Well, as soon as you get there, take a couple of minutes, write down the adversity, write down your beliefs and consequences, and record those and replace those beliefs with a different belief. Take the negative belief, turn it to a positive belief, and then see what your consequence and your outcome is. This is from page 263, 264 of Learned Optimism. Powerful, powerful book. I like this book. I love this book. I love you listening to this podcast. So thank you for listening. Uh, you know, if you ever want to reach out to me, if you get anything out of this or you want to add anything to it, I would love to hear from you. Wherever you're watching this right now, if it's video, comment, Leave a private message, a DM me, wherever you can. And if you're listening via, via audio, you know, I, I would just like to say to you, uh, thank you, number one. I, I think that audio, number one, is one of the most powerful platforms on earth. I enjoy video, definitely. I mean, who doesn't like watching video? It's so, video is so powerful because it's visually stimulating as, as well as audio stimulation, obviously. <laughs> but... I like audio because you can take it anywhere with you. And you can, uh, coming from the world of radio, use theater of the mind. I think theater, theater of the mind is powerful. Because theater of the mind, you can create the world in your own head. You can create that in your own head. And you can kind of, you know, in those uh, down times. Tony Robbins called it not enough time time. Net time. So not enough time. Net. Whenever you're cutting the grass, when you're riding in the car, commuting to work. Whenever you're doing the dishes, whenever you, whatever, if you're stocking shelves at the grocery store, put an earbud in, put on some something good, and, and listen to it. Hopefully this is something good for you. That's what I do it every day, man. I'm always popping in something whenever I have net time so I can remind myself. Because, man, you may not need reminders. Maybe you're enlightened, Buddha. I, I bless you. But if you're like me and you're not, you're not able to constantly live in that state you must remind yourself on a continuous basis so hopefully this is something that, that helps you because it's something i've used to help me speaking of something that helps me ddp yoga ddp that's like dog dog pineapple all right ddp diamond dallas page is the dude ddpyoga.com i use ddp yoga every single day now i don't do a video every day I don't, I don't watch like the app every single day, but every single morning when I wake up, I do a 25 to 30 minute DDP yoga set stretch that I have laid out to get my body kicked back into gear. And then three, four, five times a week, I'll, I'll pop out my iPad or my phone and I have the DDP yoga app, DDP Y now app, and you can do hundreds of workouts. There's hundreds and hundreds of workouts for DDP yoga on that app. It's, it's incredible. The, the part that I find the most beneficial is that whenever I'm done, my body feels like I am physically relieved and mentally relieved. Like it relieves this, this incredible weight of mental stress. But it also, if you have body pain at all, and I think a lot of my body pain, I've come to a, a realization that a lot of my body pain is due to stress as much as it's due to actual body pain. So I'm 35 years old. I shouldn't have too much body pain yet, yet 
I, I have aches and pains, and, and I, I can tell when I get stressed out, things get worse. So when I do DDP yoga, my body automatically, after 25, 30, 40, sometimes I do an hour, I just feel better. I feel stronger. I feel more put together. And, and I hope that you practice that as well. I hope you have some sort of practice that you put in on a daily or at least weekly basis that de-stresses your body, gets rid of that lactic acid, but also changes that thought process in your mind. All those stressful thoughts are out the window because you're putting yourself into a flow state. And once you get yourself into that flow state, it starts to change who you are as a person. It starts to change that subconscious, just like we were talking about earlier. It starts to change those subconscious thoughts in your mind. DDP yoga is one of those things that has done that for me over the years. I've been doing it for about almost three years now. And I, I, just, I couldn't be more thankful for what it has done for me in my life. I'm sorry, I've been doing it for almost two years now. Is it two or three? What the hell? Like, it matters. It's, it's amazing. Diamond Dallas Page, former pro wrestler from back in the 90s. Um, and it's helped to fix people's bodies, helped to change people's lives. The coolest part is you can take it wherever you go. You can put it on your phone, put it on your iPad, your tablet, whatever it is. And, uh, yeah, let it just... Try, try it out for yourself. See how it works for you. And you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Especially if you're a guy. Guys need to do more yoga. Guys don't do enough yoga. That's an issue. So think about that. Do a little more yoga. Stretch your body out. Especially if you're a weightlifter. DDPyoga.com. Check that out. Zebras, thank you so much for listening. If you want to support the podcast, it's patreon.com forward slash Rob Z Radio. Patreon.com forward slash Rob Z Radio. Support the podcast in any way you choose or support it just by listening. It's a beautiful thing as well. So thank you very much and I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace out. This is Rob Z Radio. <coughs> this is, this Rob, is Z Radio. Rob Z Radio.